What's going on, everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. Welcome to another Off the Cuff segment. It is 3.31 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, real quick. If you want to see an extra Off the Cuff episode each week, join the channel memberships. It's like $4.99 a month, the price of a cup of coffee nowadays each month. To get access to that members-only Discord chat and an extra episode members-only each and every week. We actually just did one about a very recent buyer remorse that I've been going through uh, with a recent watch purchase that I probably should not have done and uh, I regret it so if you want to learn about that whole fiasco um, again join the memberships we really do appreciate it so today you've read the title of the episode and you kind of know uh, what I'm going to be talking about but <clears throat> it's something I've mentioned a bajillion times on this channel but we haven't really explored like when it happened and I wanted to make it clear because I've recently, hey, we broke past 200,000 subscribers. Thank you guys, each and every one of you. I love each and every one of you. We have a lot more new subscribers that may have not looked at like my earlier content, like from the beginning of my channel. And so when I complain about things that I've been complaining about, they might not know uh, the impetus, the the like beginning. Someone correct, which, which word should I choose? Leave it in the comment section below. Um, we're talking about Seiko and why Seiko used to be the people's champion and now they're not. I'm going to tell you exactly when things started going downhill for Seiko. And I know what people are going to say, well, nothing's going downhill for Seiko because they're still making a ton of money. Yeah, I'm not saying that. They're still a very successful company and they will continue to be a very successful company regardless of my opinion on the matter. I'm saying... They've gone downhill in regards to the collector community, in regards to being uh, an actual value proposition. Um, you know, I still think most Seikos, if they had Swiss made on the dial, they'd be much, much more expensive for what you get. But gone are the days of, and I will be showing you a picture, you know, take a look at this, guys. When you mention the cocktail time, people don't. Like, like, newer watch collectors don't remember a time before there was anything on the dial other than presage, right? So, this is like, I'm going to say S tier when it comes to cocktail times. Hey, look at that. That's actually one of my videos. Uh, the Sarbo 6.5. This is, I've said it numerous times, perhaps one of the most beautiful Seikos ever produced. Um... If you look, and, and I urge you to watch this, why you probably shouldn't buy a Sarbo 6.5 cocktail time in 2020. This is three years old, but still relevant today. Why I wouldn't buy a Sarbo 6.5 in 2023. We could just rename that. Um, again, automatic 23 jewels. That's all that you see on the dial other than uh, the applied Seiko logo. Gone are the days of, of having a watch like this that you used to be able to get for under $400. Or what about this, the watch that, that everyone covets, you, and it's incredibly polarizing, you love it or hate it. Uh, shout out to the watch company, I'm not affiliated with them, but there's a good picture that I just clicked on. Um, this watch is, okay, there's one of the earliest Alpinists. Uh, this is the Alpinist, when you think Alpinist, right? A green dial, uh, sporty kind of do-it-all watch. Um, you used to be able to get this for like $325 all day long, brand new. The only thing that you can say badly about this watch is that the factory strap isn't great. But guess what? On the Sarbo 6.5, the factory strap was like this patent leather strap that's, that's also not great. Who cares? The fun of watch collecting is just swapping the straps out anyway. Here's when things started going downhill, okay? Because I've mentioned two watches that I think are the creme de la creme of Seiko inventory. Watches that I am very lucky to own. I'm going to uh, put myself here on screen real quick. It's right when this little thing came out. My camera will focus. It always wants to focus on my face. Do you see this beautiful watch? The Sari 085. Rose gold tone. Actually, quite a nice factory leather strap, deployant, and uh, yeah, it's got a date dial with a power reserve indicator and um, some extra stuff on the dial as far as 
different markers for that power reserve indicator. Uh, but there's some really nice check string. It is a cocktail time after all. But once they released those little dang dastardly presages, things were taking a turn for the worst. And I kind of knew it, but I didn't want to admit it. Like, when they first announced the first presage series, I complained. So I was like, nothing will be better than the Sarbo 6.5. This is stupid. But that was back in the era of like time teller swears on camera and drops F-bombs and complains all the time. I'm still complaining all the time. I just drop a little bit less F-bombs. But I was excited to get this. When I finally had this one in person, I was like, you know what? The presages aren't bad. Then I got the Fugashiki presage and I realized, hey, these presages are actually pretty sick. I didn't realize this was signaling the end of Seiko as we know it. Because when this came out, and this was pretty early on, this is the same year I kind of started my channel. It was like I started my channel then towards the end of the year in December, uh, I believe, the Sorry 082s and other presages came out. And it kind of, let's see, shout out Mark from Long Island Watch. We're going to use their picture. Uh, when this came out, you're you're not you're not finding these for I, I mean you're not finding the Sarbo six fives for anything less than I'll say seven hundred dollars. Same with the Alpinist Sarbo seventeen, and you can see Mark had this for four ninety nine uh, at Long Island Watch out of stock. You're not going to find these for for much less. So. <sighs> Then Seiko started doing some other stuff, right? Boom. Remember this? The presage blue enamel? I'm covering it with my stupid, ugly face. Remember this watch? I wanted this watch so badly, by the way, because it's gorgeous. You're getting an enamel dial. Uh, you're getting some beautiful Roman numerals. Some Instead of white with blue, which was an option, you could get blue dial with white hands and that gorgeous crescent moon. Um, it's just... An absolutely amazing watch and how you can see the enamel uh, it's it's almost like sloped like beveled you can see how it like pools down on the date complication the date window and over here by the spindle you can see how it kind of slopes down it's just a gorgeous watch with this kind of sparkly crescent moon on the uh, counter of the um, second hand it's, it's just gorgeous limited to 1500 I missed out on this release. This is a watch that I wanted very, very badly. It has a 6R movement, 21,600 vibrations per hour, or per sec, uh, yeah, per hour, my bad, six beats per second. Blah, 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 blah. Can't speak today. Power reserve, 50 hours, number, number of joules, 23. So this is essentially uh, like what the Sarbo 6.5 had, um, about 40 millimeters. The only issue that people have really with these presage watches, specifically uh, the first line of presage watches, uh, along with the Fugashiki, is that they're a bit too thick to wear under the cuff in like an actual dress scenario. Because they are thick boys. With that crystal, it, it's it's definitely like uh, a big boy. But this is this just signaled the end. Okay, and it's kind of a shame that I entered the watch world. I mean, I was collecting before this, right? But it, it's a shame that I started my channel essentially the same year that Seiko decided to exit. And, um, you know, hey, now they're doing things with the uh, Presage series where certain Presage watches are getting spring drive movements and uh, Pro Specs. You know, I have, let's see if I have it here. Um, my Tuna is, I don't have it in the, oh, wait, no, I do. Stand by. This was the first Pro Specs watch I ever got. Okay, my Sarbo, or excuse me, Sarbo, my SBBN 031 Pro Specs Tuna. All right. Um, this was not an inexpensive watch when I purchased it. It was like $1,325, I think, over a thousand bucks. Um, and I didn't really know what Pro Specs meant because, again, this was kind of right when they were hyping up these different sub series of their watches. But they're now doing Prospects LX that have, again, spring drive movements, titanium cases, like high detail or higher detail and finishing than a regular Seiko would be. And then you fast forward to, what, 2020, they discontinue the, the 
you know, Sarbo 17, bring out a uh, Pro Specs Sarbo 17. They just slap Pro Specs on the dial and release it at almost $800. Uh, they slap um, Seiko 5 on the discontinued SKX and give us this just god awful 5KX with neutered specs. And they sell it for more than uh, an SKX was. It's just, you know, I used to say, and you can see this at the beginning of my channel, that I had two favorite watchmakers, Seiko and Rolex, okay? And it's funny because those were two, those were on opposite sides of the spectrum as far as like attainability and expense at the time. Now it's not so much. That gap has, has kind of closed. And so as much as I absolutely love Seiko and the watches that I have from them are, are still my favorites. Um, I mean, I named one of my cats Seiko, right? I'm, I'm, I'm deep into this game, people. I'm built different. I still do not, I, or, or, or suddenly, not still, I suddenly do not feel comfortable saying Seiko is my favorite uh, watchmaker anymore. I don't know why. I don't know why. When you see brands like uh, Orient, who is owned by Seiko Epson Corporation, I understand that. But when you see Orient giving us things that, that Seiko used to, um, it makes you kind of disregard Seiko. And then when, when you've been, you know, studying and playing with micro brands for as long as I have, I mean, I'm, I'm so fortunate. I'm learning about watchmakers that, that I've, I would never have otherwise learned about just because of my career of reviewing watches. Um, when you see what some of these micro brands are coming out with, you wonder like, okay, I get it. These are, they don't have the capacity to make these large scale productions, but like, I mean, Boulder is, is Baltic. Like some of these watches, like these Baltic's kind of expensive, but Boulder and some of these other watchmakers, Vero, they're giving us really badass, functional, cool looking watches for not that much money. And every week when a new watch shows up in the office, I'm once again surprised. So I know this is kind of disheartening to say because I think um, people have and will label me a Seiko fanboy, but we, we, we need to accept what has actually happened, which is uh, they, they are not the people's champion and they don't, um, they don't mind it, right? Because they're, 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 they're making a ton of money. And Grand Seikos are still badass, let's face it. But Grand Seikos have already been like relatively expensive and unattainable for most people. So Creator, still badass. That's like their highest end company, essentially, uh, in the Seiko Epson uh, lineup. And I would still absolutely love an Aichi, or well, Aichi 2, to be honest. And that blue, that blue dial Aichi 2 is incredible. But um, yeah, I'd be happy with one of these. I'm not gonna count. I'm, I'm not gonna count Seiko out totally, right? They still could surprise us. But what have I said the last like three or four years? If you see a Seiko that seems interesting, it is going to be limited edition, and or over a thousand dollars. I have not been wrong about that yet. Huge bummer. Let me know what you think guys. Again, please support the channel by checking out the time teller shop link in the description below and checking out the channel memberships. Uh, the discord is always buzzing and it's a whole lot of fun. We're bringing back the Saturday live streams for the entire channel. So, um, tomorrow today, I'm recording this on Friday tomorrow. Uh, at around 11.30 a.m. Pacific, we will be going live, and we do that every single Saturday. Um, and uh, yeah, just wanted to let you know, we are releasing the giveaway details and the winners for the drive uh, giveaway. We're, we've given away three watches, and uh, that was kind of delayed because I had some personal things I was going through. But um, get excited for that. I will let you know when we drop that episode and leave a comment. All right, guys, I absolutely love you. I'm sorry I had to make this episode Seiko. I still have love for you, but I think we just need to take a little break. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time telling. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow for the live stream.